Early intervention notification sent to LEA report. This PowerPoint was created to clarify the purpose of the EI notification sent to LEA report. Before we talk about what happens after I receive the letter of notification, I want to stress two items, secure files and personally identifiable information. ALSDE Secure Files. You, the preschool contact for your LEA, will receive a secure file from the ALSDE. Please download the secure file when received because they are only available for 48 hours. This slide serves as a reminder to never send personally identifiable information, that's names or date of birth, through email. If you have an issue with a child that needs discussing, please contact me, Sheila Bowling, via email or phone call to send you a secure file so personally identifiable information can be uploaded. This is just a list of acronyms contained in this PowerPoint or in this uh, presentation for those of you who are not special education staff and that might be working on the EI to preschool tracking log. Indicator 12. So what is Indicator 12? Indicator 12 is early childhood transition. Data for the indicator is gathered from the EI to preschool tracking log. It is a requirement of OSEP, the Office of Special Education Programs, and OSEP has set the compliance target for this indicator at 100%. The EI notification letter sent to your LEA is to support you in reaching your target of 100%. So why is my LEA receiving this letter? Every LEA who has a child or children transitioning from EI receives this letter even if your EI to preschool tracking log currently shows 100%. Early intervention will send the LEA a notification letter of children being referred to the LEA. The ALSDE will send the LEA preschool contact an EI notification sent to LEA report along with a cover letter and a list of names of children whose names might appear on the tracking log. So what do I do after receiving the letter? Send the Early Intervention Service Coordinator a read receipt to acknowledge receipt of the notification letter. It is imperative uh, that you send that read receipt. Early Intervention has to hold the transition meeting by the child's 33rd month birthday. Compare the letter, the EI letter of notification sent to LEA report from us, ALSDE, to the early intervention notification to local education agencies sent from the EI service coordinators. All children for whom letters of notification from EI were sent or received must be accounted for during the reporting period in which the child turns three years old. Once you receive the letter, Preview the EI to preschool tracking log under state reports in sets to be sure that children turning three and who are being referred for further evaluation during the reporting period of July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2021 appear on the log. And we're going to view the state report on the next slide. Only the children who are being referred to the LEA for eligibility will be on the EI to preschool tracking log. The names of all other children from EI will be placed on a Word document with the reason why the child is not on the EI to preschool tracking log. When creating your Word document, please place it on your system's letterhead or identify your LEA. To view your state report, uh, if you have access to state reports, log into sets, click on your report desktop, Click on State Reports and view your EI to preschool tracking data. And we're going to talk about how to view the current data in an upcoming uh, slide. If you do not have access to state reports, get someone with access to print this document for you. So what if I did not receive a letter of notification from early intervention? If you did not receive that letter, you're simply going to contact Sheila Bowling. Uh, for any children listed and for any issues that need correcting regarding the report. 
please do not email the list of names to your EI service coordinators. Sheila Bolin will report those discrepancies in your list to EI. Uh, she can be reached or I can be reached uh, at sboling at alsde.edu or by phone 334-694-4782. So what must happen? You must monitor the transition of these students to ensure that transition, that's indicator 12, referral, eligibility, and IEP meetings are held before the child's third birthday. Eligibility must be determined by the child's third birthday, and the IEP must be developed and implemented by the third birthday for children determined eligible. Monitor the log's correct coding of reasons for the following. Why children do not have a transition or eligibility meeting and why children have eligibility and IEP meetings after their third birthday. So listen carefully. Do not pull these kids onto the tracking log. In, if the parent does not sign the referral for evaluation at the transition meeting if your LEA holds these meetings jointly but later wants a referral for evaluation then this becomes a parental referral. If your LEA holds the referral for evaluation meeting apart from the transition meeting then the referral for evaluation remains an EI referral. Any child who EI closes the file before the transition meeting does not go on the tracking log. Warning. By keeping the EIDA preschool tracking log current, your LEA should have 100% compliance with indicator 12 and your log will be correct and ready for submission. Late submission of, EIDA, of the EIDA preschool tracking log report may impact your LEA's determination status, which could impact your LEA's ability to reduce maintenance of effort. I stated earlier how to get to state reports. Now let's talk about how to preview the current data in this state report. We are going to change the dates. FYI, the reporting period is always between 7-1 and 6.30. That's July 1st through June 30th of each year. You only need to change the end dates since these dates are a constant. So for this year's data, your report is going to be 7120 to 63021. Once you've changed your dates, simply click Preview Data and you will be able to view your current data. So let's talk about the items on the tracking log. The first thing you want to look at is the date range at the top of the form. Make sure your date range for this current school year is 7120 to 63021. So let's look at column one. Column one is the student's name. Column two is the student's SSID number. Column three is the student's date of birth. Column 4 is the date the letter of notification was received from EI. Column 5. This is where I will have to do a little bit of explaining. The column's heading is eligible for EI services under Part C less than 90 days. This is regulatory language, so we can't change that. But the answer here is ideally no. The letter of notification from EI was not received with less than 90 days before the child's third birthday. It was received with more than 90 days before the child's third birthday, which means that you have approxim approximately three months or more before the child's third birthday to get eligibility determined and if needed, the IEP written and implemented. If the letter of notification was received um, 89 days or less, then the answer here is yes. That means that you received this with less than 90 days to get the child tested. Column 6, date of the transition meeting. 
column six. That is the date that you have the transition meeting. So let's explain the date of the transition meeting. If the letter of notification from EI is received with more than 90, 90 or more days to evaluate. If that is the case, then you do have a transition meeting. If the letter of notification from EI was received 89 to 45 days to evaluate, it is up to the LEA if they want to hold a transition meeting or not. However, eligibility still has to be uh, completed by the child's third birthday. If the letter of notification from EI was received with uh, 44 or less days, then you do not have to hold the transition meeting and the referral becomes a parental referral. Column 7. Column 7 is type of referral and here is going to be an early intervention referral. If you have been doing uh, the preschool tracking log for a period of time, you will know that we used to have parental referrals on this. Um, preschool tracking log. We no longer have parental referrals. Everything going on this tracking log is now an EI referral. Column 8. Column 8 is the date sign notice and consent for evaluation was received in the public agency. Remember, the student only goes into sets if you have a referral meeting, whether you accept the referral or not. If you have a referral meeting, you put the student into sets. Place the date you receive the signed notice and consent for evaluation in this column if the LEA accepted the referral. Column 9, Date of Initial Eligibility Determination. It says EI only. And as I explained earlier, we used to have parental referrals on this tracking log. However, they're no longer on the tracking log. So ignore EI only, and you're going to place the date of the initial eligibility determination in column 9. Column 10, determined eligible for services. This is going to be a yes or a no, depending on the outcome of the eligibility. Column 11 eligibility determined prior to third birthday? This is an answer of yes, yes or no. And if the answer is no, that it was not determined prior to the child's third birthday, then we are going to proceed to column 12. And column's 12 title says, if no, the range of days uh, eligibility determined after third birthday. Once you have determined the number of days the child's eligibility was late, a drop down box will appear and you can put the range of days um, in that column. Column 13, for late or no eligibility determination. If you answer no in column 11, that eligibility was not determined prior to the child's third birthday, then we have to note the reason. It is either going to be a parent delay or an other delay, and we're going to talk about those on the next slide. Column 14. Column 14 is the date of the initial IEP meeting, and it says EI only as well. And again, ignore EI only, and you're going to put the date, if the student was eligible, you're going to put the date of the initial IEP meeting in column 14. Column 15, it says IEP developed and implemented by the child's third birthday. And again, this is going to be a yes or a no. If the answer is no, then you're going to proceed to column 16. If no, you are going to determine the range of days the IEP was developed after the child's third birthday. And column 17 is the reason for late or no IEP development. Again, if you answered no to column 15, then column 17, you are going to tell us the reason why this was late. Reasons for late or no eligibility. It is either going to be a parent or parental delay or an other delay. Parent delays are at least two no-show meetings, parent declined services, parent stopped process, referral withdrawn, or unable to contact the parent. 
other delays, child illness, child transferred out, child transferred in, child moved, child died, referral was forwarded to the wrong LEA, referral declined by the LEA, referral forwarded to the right LEA, EI scheduled meeting late, EI sent notification late, there was a family emergency, or it is a central office delay. You should no longer use EI closed file. Student folder tabs. In the student folder, there are four tabs. You have your basic, other, EI to preschool, and gifted. If needed information is missing from your EI to preschool tracking log, check what is in the student's folder under the basic tab. In order for some information to appear on the tracking log, it must be entered manually under the EI to preschool tab. Remember, when entering test data under the basic tab, check the EI to preschool tab to see if the information auto-populated or if you need to manually input the data. For more information on completing the EI to preschool tracking log, Indicator 12, refer to the district approved process for state reports help document 2021. The information for Indicator 12 is on pages 6 through 8. Early submission of Indicator 12 data. Data collection will occur early this year due to the power school migration. The data collection window is May 3rd through the 17th, 2021. Please use the emergency LEA school closure form for late or no eligibility due to COVID-19 or for LEAs experiencing inclement weather from 7-1-20 to any time during the reporting period. Evidence and documentation of the LEA school closure uh, form will be required. For those students whose third birthday falls after the submission window and before the new reporting period, Continue to hold meetings. The only thing you will do differently is keep a hard copy or paper copy of all documents to enter into PowerSchool. If you have any questions or need any clarification, please contact Sheila Bowling at 334-694-4782 or email at sbolling at alsde.edu.